I give talks about the importance of dreams, I often mention what I believe to be the well-known fact that Paul McCartney came up with the music for the song Yesterday in his dreams. It's one example of the creative work that originates in our dreams, but as you're about to find out, it's far from the only one. Dreams are such a foundation in the world of music that my guest, author Craig Sim Webb, has written a book about it. The Dreams Behind the Music reveals little-known dreams that inspired tremendous success for over 100 famous artists. And it highlights principles and techniques anyone can use to harvest their own dreams for significant breakthroughs. Craig is also a dream analyst and researcher, having done pioneering work on lucid dreams at Stanford. Welcome to the Dream Power Show, Craig. Oh, thanks a lot for the invite. It's really good to, to meet you and to share with some of the amazing, uh, I guess, audience who's joining us too. Oh, well, thank you for that, Craig. But Craig, I want to start with this. What inspired you to write this book? Uh, well, I guess a number of factors. The Dreams Behind the Music uh, sort of says two parts of me that weren't fully merged and probably still aren't. But dreaming, my passion, I think the same one that you and many of the listeners have, exploring, applying dreams in their lives. And then a whole artistic side, music kind of being the muse. Uh, so I'm a, a multidisciplinary artist. But one of the big things that keeps recurring in my dreams kind of like a knock on the door, you know, calling dreams, I call them. Uh, if you wish, you can click on the link of this dream and after maybe a year or two of effort, you can have this beautiful future. Uh, those come often with music and new instruments and song ideas, and sort of like Paul McCartney in, in terms of career steps, not always music. So I guess clicking on those things led to the merge, and slow merge inside me that came out as an expression of the book here. Uh, and personally, I, I sort of love stories that sort of have neat, famous people in them and interesting principles. I tried to kind of isolate the principles or universal ideas, universal techniques that everybody can use. So it's kind of about language of music, maybe celebrity, but really a mother, a doctor, a business person, anybody could use most of the principles. And I guess that's why it's a fit for Dream Power Radio, right? Oh, absolutely. And we're going to get into your connection with music in a little while. But I do want to get back to the book itself, because uh, I talked in the intro about Paul McCartney and yesterday. But if I'm not uh, if I'm correct, it's not the only Beatles song that was instigated by a dream, was it? Yeah, well, Paul's one of uh, my favorite dreamers. Uh, I borrow the phrase to say uh, shock, rock and roll shaman. <laughs> uh, Sting called himself sort of a let's say, shamanic states of dreaming. Sting's another big musical dreamer. Uh, and Sir McCartney dreamt, uh, I think I mentioned yesterday, which he shared uh, not that long ago, very publicly. Uh, but for many years, not too many people knew about that. So thank you for bringing it out there. Show people examples that can really be practical in life. And then, of course, Let It Be. That's another one he shared, I think, only about a year ago on uh, Carpool Karaoke. I mean, a little bit here and there before that, but in a mainstream way for the West. Uh, there was a big one about a year ago. He shared some of the story of Let It Be, where his mother, you know, the lyric, uh, Mother Mary came to me. Of course, his mother's name is Mary, his physical mom, who, who passed when he was younger. And she came in a dream and I think had a rough time when the Beatles were having a sort of the rocky part towards the end of their, their togetherness. And she said, you know, son, just let it be. And he said, uh, I guess it touched me so deeply. Maybe it'll touch listeners, made a lyric, made the song. And you can sort of see the thread that comes some kind of inside info. I sort of call it, you know, the shamanic rock and roller, but really that's what shamans or let's say medicine people or anybody really tuned inward gets the inside data. I say collecting the, the files and the data and the web pages off the inner net. It's kind of like internet, but it's in our dreams. And then Love bringing it up to people. Internet. The internet. Yeah, why not? I mean, we have this big physical version of what's already inside of us. So I borrowed the phrase. I hope that's okay, people. I'm allowed to joke a little about it because my family name is Webb, right? Exactly. So it's very interesting that you say that, you know, we know Paul McCartney came up with the music for yesterday in his dream, but the lyrics for Let It Be came from, or the inspiration, the lyric came from his dream. So yeah. And I'm not sure we can separate them entirely because he's a pretty sharp dreamer. This is a, a little hidden technique in there for any of you creatives, which I think is everybody. 
but he would often, or when he would get these kind of musical inspirations, and there's a few more if you want I can share, but he'll right away, you know, sort of, and I think at Jane Asher's apartment when I got yesterday, crawled out of bed, groggy, you know, maybe a cool morning there in UK, uh, but uh, just went right over to the piano and tried to piece together the song. Uh, and so he kind of gets up early right away. And I imagine the dreams and the music for Let It Be were both mixed in. So maybe he's just writing the lyrics at that moment, but then he starts humming the phrase and it kind of comes together, I guess, a batch. And there's a, a little bit of science or let's say statistics behind my guess, because it turns out that actually anybody who wishes, it's pretty much anybody who wishes uh, in sort of a smaller study I did, and then some other research I've seen since then, it looks like people who intend or, you know, just say, hey, that's interesting. Let me be open or try it to have musical dreams or dream of new songs even uh, seem to get it very quickly, very easily. Like surprisingly, seven out of seven of uh, my students got it within a week uh, who never really dreamt music, maybe once, three years before for one of them, but, you know, never really intended it. But it's almost like pressing a button. Hey, soundtrack on, please. You know, the mute button, but unmute in this case for dreams. And uh, then all of a sudden music can come. So I imagine that the music and the, the lyrics weren't too far apart. It's kind of from the inner source. We don't know. I don't want to put words in Sir McCartney's mouth. But there is a very, very interesting story that sort of points to other aspects of such dreams by the Beatles. And this one's not known about yet. But thanks to Dream Power Radio and maybe some other <laughs> helpers here. Uh, this Let's hear it. Get there more, maybe a little bit in my book, that uh, Lennon and McCartney had just started working together, obviously an incredible partnership, but at the time they didn't really know. They're just sort of two gents in, I guess, Liverpool, uh, just kind of having fun, playing guitar, having a wish to be like that guy on TV called Elvis. And then uh, a recurring dream that Sir McCartney had, he wasn't Sir at the time, but uh, was digging up an old tin can in his backyard. Uh, so he, he actually shared this and I reference, you know, all, I think 750 references in my book point to the actual place where he shared it or it was shown or some of them like, actual events that happened like plane crashes, etc. So I like to keep a little bit of credentials in there and he, he actually shared this. He woke up that morning with the dream. He dug up the same tin can or the same little can, I guess, as usual from his backyard, except that it had gold coins. Uh, and he said, wow, that's interesting. He just happened to be chatting, I guess, with his new songwriting mate, John, and said, oh, I had my recurring dream, whatever accent, Liverpool. And uh, John said, well, that's really strange because just this morning, I actually you know, had a dream also of digging up a tin can of gold coins or something pretty close to it, enough that it was extremely unusual. They both pretty much had the same dream. That was tandem and, uh, dreaming. He kind of like just says a little phrase at the end. I guess you could say it sort of played out true because, you know, he has, I think, now uh, half a billion or, or more yes. royalties in all his life. So he did pretty well with the gold coins for that partnership. Mm -hmm. It also brings up the whole idea of tandem dreaming, which uh, right. not very many people do, but you get that connection. Yeah, mutual dreaming. I'm not, I wouldn't be so surprised. In this case, it was sort of, let's say, new creative partners, bandmates, and they turned out to be lifelong friends and colleagues and such, you know, with a little bit of waves in the mix, of course. But I would say any partners out there, you know, obviously wife, husband, but even, let's say, other variations on a theme, children and parents, if they started to check a little more, I bet you they would notice a lot of what I call mutual theming, sort of like mutual dreaming, but it's not always in the language of life where I'm at this point of view, I see the TV or I see the tree exactly like this, you're over there, you see the other side of the TV. So it's not, that's more the physical language of our perception in dreams. It might be, oh, I had this character appear or the color of the room was this, or we were outside running, going on a river, but big more general things like a scene or a motif. And if people check, I bet you you'd be very surprised that it happens all the time because I, I check with clients and students and I myself notice it personally quite often. That, yeah, it's there if we look for it. Sometimes it's very striking though, exact same dream, right? Have you ever had that? Uh, I haven't, but again, I don't usually ask other people if they've dreamt the same thing that I have. And uh, it's an interesting question to take up that I, I may do in the future.
<laughs> All so, right, new little re home research. We call it detective science. With dreams, we get to be first person explorer and get our data, each person. Absolutely. Well, in your book, it's not only about uh, Beatles who had uh, songs come out of their dreams, but you also say Beyonce has a song that came from one of her dreams. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Uh, yes, well, Beyonce is a, a visual artist. Uh, although people say, what? I thought she was a musician. Her album, that which she says every song was at least inspired by, or maybe direct from Dream Download, uh, the visual album. She says, yes, because I actually see music. I see the images. I see the sort of dreams of it. Some she actually gets right on waking up, so she'll get that as her music. Uh, which sort of bridges into a whole interesting chapter in the book that uh, I just labeled because I started seeing sort of the metadata uh, when I was gathering many stories, like 200 different artists. There was certain groupings that were kind of interesting that don't really show if we just know a story or a, I guess an anecdote here or there. But I noticed a lot of artists, especially the, the dream ones who kind of tune inward and bring it out quite consciously, like let's say the applied dreamers, I would might call them. Uh, they have synesthesia. In other words, their senses, different senses bridge a little bit into each other. Uh, Pharrell will go, you know, the, the artist Pharrell. <laughs> what is this? I'm going to be happy. Clap along. I can't say too many lyrics here for copyright. But I don't think you'd mind that uh, Pharrell actually sees music when he meditates in the studio. Uh, or, or kind of sits quiet, maybe with eyes closed. And sees like co colors dancing around a bit like I, I believe Beyonce does. So there's this kind of crossover where that visuals and the feelings that comes with them translates into a musical song or working arrangement or whatever they're, they're working on in that moment. And then there's some other interesting variations. I have a, a bit of a strange one, I actually sort of hear touch, which is a pretty small percentage. Do you have any synesthesias? There's some where you can sort of like remember numbers really perfectly. And there's a few strange ones, but bridging of senses like hearing colors or seeing sound or anything like that sometimes i mean it doesn't happen very often but yeah. yes yes i do i do it's uh well, it, is, it's, it could be a sign of some creative genius so a friendly little seed or suggestion for you and any listener if it starts coming a little bit maybe uh, at least be open maybe nurture because it sounds like it can bring some interesting success yeah so uh, i want to ask you in your research because um you either have dreams spontaneously where you just dream, you go to bed, you have the dream and it's there, or you can, uh, you know, make a dream declaration or do a dream incubation and meditate on what you want to dream about before you have the dream. So uh, which is it with these artists? Is it a little bit of both or? Yeah, there's a few. I have a whole chapter on what uh, I think everybody here probably is aware of called lucid dreamers. Uh, and even lucid isn't quite an on or off thing. And obviously some people use the word differently, but I'll say generally people who intend dreams. And my definition of lucidity, which has expanded quite a bit since I was involved with the research at Stanford, they kind of brought it to the West. Uh, even if we intend a topic to dream about, or maybe not so consciously, you know, we watch a scary movie going to bed, or we're just thinking about something or worrying or whatever, but our mental focus is on a certain topic. Our emotions are probably following that. And we fall asleep, we go to a deeper state, maybe even meditation. But if we fall asleep with anything like that, yeah, we're going to probably dream on it. I think anybody here say that, yeah, I slept on a problem before. Same idea. So it can be intentional or unintentional, but it starts to guide dreams. So that's kind of my, my little uh, movement of the RPM needle of lucidity, maybe not fully into the, the green yet, but starting to intend dreams before they happen. And then maybe more official lucidity is during the dream uh, that can start to happen. And there's quite a few. Uh, one interesting one is a colleague I worked with, Robert Rich. It turns out a number of the electronic music musicians who do sort of soundscapes and different sounds, it's not as quite as much as like songs, I guess, or quite a you know, rock and roll radio songs anyway, but more soundscapes and Brian Eno is another. They actually sort of seem to intentionally dream quite a bit. So Robert Rich did too. He said he had a really powerful dream where he kind of merged into a painting in the dream, kind of became aware and then dove into a painting, ended up flying over the hills of Santa Cruz, which is close to where he lived in California, 
and then hearing the most rapturous, incredible, I guess, at first actually seeing this sort of sound formation in the air and then I think hearing and feeling and waking up with it. And that became one of the songs on the album, I think Numinous or one of the albums he was working on at the time. So there's certainly people who quite intentionally you know, go in, uh, go into the dream music studio uh, on one of them and will sort of work on songs or ask for inspiration or somehow just let it come. But I can still say even as a, a fairly proficient lucid dreamer, many times the, the melody just comes uh, if I want it. I know that I can kind of turn on the, or off the mute button for the music pretty much any day. I can sort of have that. It's just a question of which ones am I going to work on and log and it does take some physical time so I kind of let them come a little more naturally but sometimes if I'm working on a song an album or or maybe something even like producing somebody else's work sometimes just editing audio interviews uh, I might intentionally ask for guidance or in the dream say hey is there a better way to mix this or arrange it or is a certain instrument I sort of got the melody but example here we'll, we'll kind of go back to some of the famous folks Rolling Stones uh, got uh, get no can't get no satisfaction. At least Keith Richards, the guitarist, got this dream where he said he kind of pulled out a tape recorder in the middle of the night and just uh, strummed, I guess, this little riff on his guitar. And he didn't even remember in the morning, but he saw that a bunch of tape had run, so he uh, went and listened to it. He said, "Oh wow, cool!" Uh, but he wasn't as into it, and and he he played it for I guess Mick Jagger, his his bandmate. They were just beginning at the time. And Mick said, hey, I like it, I like it, because he wasn't sure he wanted to really record. So Mick, I think that day or, or shortly thereafter, wrote some lyrics that seemed to fit pretty well. And they, they pieced it together and he said, well, I want to make it more rock. So they had this really grunge sound. Uh, in this case, I don't think he necessarily did ask or go in dreams to consciously get that guidance. But it's certainly quite possible. Fish, not sure if you're aware of that artist. He's oh, more yes. of a performance artist. Yeah, you know? You know oh, yes. The group. And uh, the, I guess the, one of the main songwriters there, actually uh, the performers on stage, Mike Gordon, goes in dreams and quite actively gets a feeling, a sound, or a music. Uh, and there's other artists who do that too. So okay. I think this it's all, more on and off. Yeah, Maybe is, some do sometimes. Oh, Craig, you said that, that during this conversation that you're also a performer and you've come up with music from your dreams. So. We're actually going to play a couple of clips from your music, and I'd like you to elaborate a little bit about, you know, what it means to you, maybe where it came from. So this first clip uh, I want to talk about is the one that you call Bass Riff. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, oh, Bass Riff's an interesting one, like uh, I think maybe about eight or nine that I included in uh, my dream-inspired video. We can talk about that. There's a little sort of what I call seeds. Uh, I don't necessarily dream, you know, minutes or, or, or hours of music, uh, probably nobody does. Some people actually get, I think, longer strings. And I know Mozart saw visually his entire composition as like almost like this kind of crystal formation that he later translated as music. But he saw it all at once, complete the whole symphony or whatever. So. I don't quite get that. I get these, what I call sort of a DNA maybe, or a seed for what could be a song, maybe the main theme or a little riff or a hook or whatever you want to call it. In this case, the bass riff was probably something like that. Uh, I included about eight of these in the, the video, Treasure in a Bottle. People can check it out on my YouTube channel. Uh, and uh, they're just sort of seeds that I hadn't really put together, but I was describing the dreaming music process and, and connecting it with a very interesting photographic technique that came from a dream also of sort of bending spectrum rainbow light in a, a neat way which is kind of a connection for the rainbow there behind you so maybe there's a little link little uh, but there's nothing there. too deep but i noticed after that that same sound is pretty close to the seinfeld uh, sort of scene transition sound not the same melody exactly, but the, the bass kind of playing twangy like that. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. Maybe that's my comedic side of kind of tuning into dreams. <laughs> it could be. Uh, it's very interesting that you say that, that you call them little seeds. Uh, I often have what I refer to as dream snippets, where yeah, yeah. My, my I'm not a musician. I can't carry a tune. I don't play any instruments, but I do write. And I will come up with, you know, sentences or, or themes that I want to write about, you know, in a dream. But 
it's usually not the whole full blown thing. It's usually just you know a is set idea. You write fiction? Uh, no, no nonfiction. Oh. You know, kind of essays sure. type thing. I was wondering if you dreamt your characters because some authors have dreamt characters too. Oh, there's there's a laundry list of authors who have had their books come out of dreams. You know, Mark Twain was big dreamer, just for an example. Oh. Stephen King, quite a number. Stephen of King, and so many people. Uh, but I want to get back to you, and let's get back to your music. Uh, that's here's that one was an instrumental, just a little clip of an instrumental. Yeah. But this one's Go a song ahead. that's got music and lyrics called "Lucid Never Felt as Good." Wherever I've been in my life, I've never felt as good. As when I'm with you From a dream this melody just sprang into my life yeah. In this way the seeds of soul are born Well, my friends and family and love are there very dear to me, yeah. But without the muse, I'd be for long. She told me, wherever I've been in my life, I've never felt as good as when I'm with you. And I said, wherever I've been in my life, I've never felt as good. Right, well, that one uh, is sort of a, a slash title. Lucid is the main title, but people don't always get it because it's just at the end of the song. So the chorus, uh, I guess, repeating part, the refrain says, uh, never felt as good as when I'm with you. That's an interesting one to sort of show some principles that I think might be interesting for listeners and like also something that I learned in my life. So hopefully that can be of value. But I just got the, like most of these melodies, they come to me sort of a hook. In this case, I think I used it as a hook anyways. Wherever I've been in my life, I've never felt as good as when I'm with you. Can't quite get the bass note today, but anyway. Um, something close to that when I woke up and wow, interesting. And little technique tip here, had my voice recorder and so recorded right away as I woke up. So I got it as clear as I can with the key and maybe the timing, the, 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 the speed, the tempo too. And then I sort of sat around because I did get a number of little melodies for a while. I thought, okay, that's an interesting one. Maybe I'll work on it. Uh, then I started deciding what could the lyrics be about because I got the lyrics and the music together right, in that one. And I thought, okay, never felt as good as when I'm with you. Maybe I'll use my my dream side here and I'll say, maybe it's the inner self, my deep dream wisdom coming and speaking to the physical self, but I'll sort of make it like a, it could be a romantic relationship too. Sort of, you know, not super clear what it is, but some of the lyrics start to say closer that, yeah, we're talking about an inner partnership or a relationship with a deep inner friend. And in that case, the, the woman, my inner subconscious, the anima, perhaps, said, yeah, I never felt as good as when I'm with you. So the interesting part is here, I did start writing and recording. And what's super interesting, this is a principle I saw in many of the artists, and maybe you've seen this too, but the moment they sort of acted on it, and the moment I acted on and started actually putting a little work, and I sort of make the analogy, I went from a, a couple of dates into going steady with this song. Uh, and started recording, arranging a little bit. Then a next dream came pretty soon, you know, after that commitment. I forget the exact timing, but days at most, week or something. And it gave a whole different sound because I'm more of a, like a folk guitar, I like acoustic, sometimes even just like acapella and things up till then. And it was like this rock and roll driving distortion beat. Uh, it, it brought the bridge which uh, people can hear in that song if they check it out but it's a pretty hard electric guitar with with distortion i was like whoa you know grunge i'm not quite the grunge guy but i thought well maybe that's a good character development for me to get my my hard rocker self grown a little bit here 
but I also took it as a pretty specific guidance and I added in distortion guitar and it changed the feel of the song quite a bit. And I, I did really enjoy it. So the principle there that and maybe everybody can check out is once we kind of commit to it, act a little bit towards it, it seems like the subconscious says, oh, cool, you know, he's showing up or she's showing up and the next step is, is given. Yeah. Okay, I have a very practical question to ask you. So you dream uh, the music. How do you remember it? Do you get out, take out your guitar and record it, or do you just sing it into record? How do you do that? Yeah. Well, uh, I have to be honest here. Maybe I'm dating myself. Officially, uh, I did record originally on a tape recorder. So that was, I just kept a little tape recorder by my bed. Uh, the days of tape recorders have passed here. So I keep an MP3 recorder, but uh, what I find most efficient now, uh, so that I act on it quickly, because it's not obvious if we just gather all kinds of stuff on a voice recorder or maybe our cell phone. I put it right into the cell phone, but a little tip here, I keep the, uh, the airplane function on, so the cellular waves off at night, so I don't get blasted with the, the radiation. And then right away, as soon as I've recorded it, I email it to myself, you know, send, and that day I'll have the little melody there and I'll choose if I'm gonna work on it or at least I'll record it with as much as I can remember of the dream and, and maybe a few other hits. And most of the artists who, or many artists seem to agree that when it was fresh, like the morning of, or at least that week, and they worked on it, they got a lot more and it seemed more connected with that intuitive source spring of the song. Otherwise, you know, some of the artists have their talents but they didn't get quite as much. One interesting one is Gilbert and Sullivan, who said he remembered sort of having music, but he couldn't really remember any of the, the melody, but he just sort of had the feeling. You know, I think this might actually be the first ever recorded dream music, uh, and might even be the first ever recorded uh, music, because it was right around the time of being able to record things. Uh, and so he called that song The Lost Chord, which I guess was sort of the forgotten dream, but I think he included the feeling and vibe and other artists who sort of wake up, you know, sleep on the keyboard. One of the soundtrack composers for games, forget his name, but a Japanese fellow, he says he sleeps on his keyboard, you know, kind of, I guess, with maybe a little pillow or something so that he can get it as fresh as he can and get it right in and he can start working on it right away. And many others, Lenny Kravitz says he does that. He goes right into the studio at night, et cetera, et cetera. So the fresher, the better. Oh, wow. That is so fascinating to me. And I've got a million more questions to you, but we're running out of time. So I just have time for this one final one, Craig, which is how can people find out more about you and your book and your work? Oh, well, thanks for that, Debbie. If it resonates with you today, or if you want to learn more, you can certainly uh, follow different trainings or I guess private coaching that I offer, craigweb.ca. Uh, if you want to learn about teleclasses, you can check out applieddreaming.com with two Ds, Applied Dreaming. And then uh, if you want to check out the book, it's on Amazon. You can just go Dreams Behind the Music, or you can actually read a little more about it at the website, dreamsbehindthemusic.com. You can also reach to me. Uh, I encourage you to make sure to subscribe for Debbie's show here because she brings on lots of great content. So part of what we're offering is a huge gift from Debbie, and I appreciate it. Thanks, Debbie. Okay. Right We've been speaking about dreams and creativity with author and dream analyst, Craig Sim Webb. I hope you've enjoyed today's program. If so, please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Until next time, this is Debbie Spector Weissman saying, sweet dreams, everybody. <laughs>